Hello, and welcome to a very special edition of the Advent IM podcast, Risk and Business. And it's special because today I'm here with Ellie Hurst. Hi. Recently returned in all her glory, <laughs> having won a Women in Security Award in London. I did. Congratulations. Thank Ellie. you. Thank you very much. So I think it's fair to say that in the very early days, you weren't mm, necessarily always a fan of women in groups, not just women in security, but the women in groups, generally speaking. Yeah, the women in movement always depressed me slightly. But that was because uh, my background, uh, where I come from, the industries I'd worked in were very evenly pitched. You know, there were lots and lots of women. There were lots of women in very senior positions. Um, and so it always felt a kind of a bit, little bit head patty, I suppose. So not necessarily opposed to women being successful in various industries, oh, no. but maybe didn't see the need for there to be a specific women. Yeah, I didn't really understand why, um, why we needed to be singled out. And that was obviously very early days. Uh, when I first joined Advent, it was a long time ago, and I made the fatal error of assuming that the security industry was like all of the other industries that I'd worked in. I was therefore very evenly pitched and very diverse and all that kind of thing, and then realised very quickly, <laughs> oh, crikey. <laughs> very heavily stacked with uh, middle-aged men. <laughs> yeah, um, I really do stick out like a sore thumb here. And so I, I leaned into the sticking out like a sore thumb and just went with it. But so um, it took me, you know, a very short amount of time before I realised the value um, of having a women in security uh, group. And of course, I remember the first Women in Security Awards and, um, you know, watching it grow over the last 11 years to the incredible event that it was last week. Just extraordinary. And I really see the value really see the value because I see how much it adds to the lives and careers of other women um, and when I still look now at the security industry and see we still do have a lack of women uh, not necessarily uh, thinking about future proofing our supply of women mm -hmm. as well making it attractive to them to want to come and work in security whether you know in any guise you know security is a huge a huge area you know there are lots of different things that you could put your skills to work in yeah and I mean I think we still predominantly see um, certainly at the senior level within security the people there have been drawn from very similar backgrounds mm -hmm. so predominantly ex-military ex-police mm -hmm. ex-MOD those mm -hmm. sorts of organizations mm -hmm. which in themselves tend to be organizations that are highly structured yeah rigid require a certain type of group thinking because that's the whole point of the roles. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we've learned, you know, if we've learned anything over the last few years is that we really need um, creative thinkers, uh, creative problem solvers in security because the problems have become infinitely more uh, complex that we have to deal with. So that kind of thinking um, may be great for certain kinds of implementation, but when it comes to actual problem solving and, and dealing with the uh, problem in a creative and adaptive way, it doesn't always work. And not, so, attracting... Not just thinking outside the box, but thinking as if there is no box. Yes, as, as if there is no box or, or any other you know, appendage. So um, I think having come from a industry where um, I was always about the data, so I came from... Um, an industry where I was working with data, I was building information from that, I was building insight. So I was used to working with information and data and producing these information assets that needed to be protected at the end of it because they had a commercial value. And obviously now I look down the other end of the telescope and I'm all about you know, wanting to create usable, um, exploitable information assets that are appropriately protected. And rather than having a security says no kind of attitude, but you know, yeah. what's the what's the objective? What is, what is it that you need to achieve? What's the most secure way that the people who need to work with that information to exploit it or maybe create further insight from it? Let's make it easy for them to be able to do that in a secure way. And I think if you are used to looking at and using 
information assets in that way, you maybe look at the security of those information assets in a different way. And so bringing in that diversity of thought into security, I think, is really important. So diversity doesn't just have to be around gender or colour. Oh, definitely not, no. It's, it's about diversity of thinking mm-hmm. as much as anything. Yeah, diversity of thinking, of background, of experience. Um, you know, it's all really, really important. If yeah. everybody has had exactly the same sort of experience, that may be great if you're building processes. Um, but, you know it may not survive first contact with the enemy because you're um, in a situation where you maybe need to be a little bit more creative about something. Yeah. And if you are, if you don't have a team that is able to react um, in a creative way, you may actually be creating more risk inadvertently. Mm. It's a really interesting way of thinking about it. So, obviously, a great night out last night. Uh, not last night, last week. It feels like it was last night. <clears throat> You still seem to be on uh, cloud nine. I am, definitely, definitely. Tell us a little bit about the night itself. Well, it was brilliant. And the award is massively heavy, which was unexpected because it's lead crystal. Um, So um, that was quite a surprise. (laughs) I was almost as surprised about that as I was as winning because I knew who I thought was going to win. And uh, when I heard my name, I think my jaw absolutely hit the floor. But um, it was just a wonderful night. So the team was there, um, the women that I work with, um, some colleagues from other areas, um, you know, from, um, we had the lovely Miriam who came from Kingston. And we had uh, Lynn and um, Hayley who come from physical security backgrounds. My daughter was there, which was which Yay. was brilliant. And my partner, absolutely wonderful. So yeah, it was just incredible. And just meeting some of those extraordinary women. And funnily enough, the first, the inaugural Women in Security Awards was where I met Demelza Staples, who also won um, on the night. Uh, that was where, so she was the first woman in security, really, that I met. And it was so wonderful. And you're both up there winning and awards. And we both won. And I, I was just so happy for her. I think I was as happy for her as I was for me. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, she was so kind and she talked to me about you know, about what it was like being a woman in security. And she kind of broke down a lot of my thinking about the whole women in security thing. You know, she helped with that. So, and obviously an incredible woman too. So it was just, it was wonderful to share that night with her too. And I mean, the the talent on the the evening, across all of the different awards categories, the the shortlist of individuals in yeah. each category it was incredible yeah. it was and that's one of the most amazing things so um to to be in the company of those of those women was just such a privilege one of the fantastic things that's happening next year is the introduction of the women in security academy and um i think we've got our inaugural meeting in february and this is going to be all of the finalists. So it's not just the winners, it's the finalists of the last 11 years of women in security. Wow, what a fantastic pool of talent that's going to make. Extraordinary collection mm. of women. And together we can help with the education, the growing awareness, the mentoring and supporting of the next generation of women coming through in security, as well as the ones that are here now. And that's got to be absolutely vital, right? The yes. Mentoring the next generation. Yes. Because, you know, we, we've talked on numerous times in various formats and various platforms about the skills deficit within yeah. security. Yeah. And, you know, there's got to be, for all of us who are now at a senior level, that has to be part of our prime directive is that we look to the next generation. Absolutely. So I see um, part of my role in that um, as, yes, helping to, you know, support women who are joining and, you know, developing um their career through security but also I want to continue to do the work that I've done before speaking um, in educational um, institutions to talk to other women um, about the possibility of careers um, in security because I think we still need to tempt them in we're still not Mm. we're still not um, seeing enough wanting to actually join so being a very much a visible part why do you think that is Oh, gosh. I think that's a whole other podcast, actually. (laughs) (laughs) I think that would be uh, one for another day, definitely. I think there are a variety of um, reasons, and we've touched on some of them already, the the group think. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a little bit like wanting people to work in security is a little bit like uh, wanting people 
to do good security, you know, just every day yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis. You have to make it easy for people to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. You have to make it easier for people to want to come and join the industry. So we need to be visible. We need to be talking. We need to be, you know, selling our industry and talking about it, but also being frank about some of our, some of our difficulties and challenges and saying, you know, you know, be the change that you want to see. And actually, is that part of the, the challenge that we have is that um, there aren't enough people in the security profession who are also good external communicators. You almost, um, we almost need to be marketing the whole industry, the whole profession. Yes. As, as a group of professionals, we need to be talking about it a lot more Absolutely. and talking about why it's such an amazing profession to be part of. And, you know, and the amount of job satisfaction that you get from working in an industry like this is huge. So if you look at my team, um, my my communicators are learning to be good security people too. Um, so it, it's almost like the reverse of what we talk about to security people. Mm -hmm. To security people, be good communicators, learn how to communicate. If it's a struggle, talk to your communications and marketing teams and use, use their help to, to you know blend you into the business and get you listened to and heard in all the places that you need to. The reverse is happening with my team. I want to make sure that they are, you know, fully conversant and able to speak security with security people mm. um, so that, you know, you make, you're actually making a difference. There's no point to doing any of the things that we all do if they don't make a difference. And it's the most important thing is to be useful. And, and you're leading by example in that because um, I know that you've, you started a new educational challenge this year as well. I have. Um, I'm doing my certificate in security management. I'm doing that with perpetuity training through the Security Institute, where I'm an associate member. And I know that um, just through the initial couple of modules um, in that course, the Institute is acknowledging that there is a, a very particular set of backgrounds that security people have traditionally come from, and they are hoping and trying to support the growth of people coming from other areas with other disciplines, with other experience and other skills to offer and other pers perspectives mm -hmm. on things. So the Security Institute recognises the importance um, of, bring, of, of the lack of a closed shop shall we say, um, and changing that. And um, so, yeah, it was really important to me to be able to, having spent 12 years working with you, Mike, so obviously I've had an extraordinary mentor, very, very lucky to have been working with you and, and learning as much as I have. Too kind. Wanting to formalise that into something that, again, would allow me to have those conversations with other security people to say, may not be... Um, you know, doing what you do, but I understand conceptually what you do and I understand some of the challenges and we can talk the same language. And in that way, maybe I can help make things mm -hmm. better. Maybe I can help, you know, um, it, guide ourselves through these tricky waters and our, our ever-changing and very volatile threat landscape. So if there are people listening to this podcast now, and especially if there are women listening mm. to this podcast now who are not currently part um, of the security profession, but are maybe thinking, I'd like to know more. Um, I'd like to explore the possibility of entering it as a profession. What sort of advice would you give to them? I think one of the first things that you should do is probably um, find yourself a mentor of some description. Um, the Chartered Institute of Information Security and also the Security Institute are very well placed to be able to put you in touch with people who can um, help you. Um, they can talk to you about the various different aspects of security. If you're not sure about doing that, you can always come to me. You can chat to me. Um, you know, you can find me virtually anywhere if you put my anywhere. name into a search engine. <laughs> I'll, I'll pop up somewhere. Um, and, you know, if I can help, I will. If that's just a case of signposting you to the right person or or the right um, organisation, um, then I'm, I'm happy to do that. But... You know, don't hold don't hold back by any means. There are lots of organisations out there that are that are keen. It's just a case of bringing the two worlds together. And you've you've done some mentoring with I universities. Have. I have, I have, and also to try and encourage um, young people um, into security. You know, of of all. Because um, that's an aspect of diversity as well. You know, it is. I mean, I can remember. Um, some years ago now, of course, but I can remember back in my 40s being considered to be a young person in the yeah. industry. 
Yeah, exactly. And so I think we, we need to, so we need to look at career paths. We need to look at second career paths. Um, we need to look at what people are learning once they're there and how they're developing. So there's a, there's a lot to happen with security. It's um, a sector that's grown up kind of alongside business in mm. so many ways. And those connections in are not maybe as firm as they need to be. And it's the people that are going to make the difference. So having the diversity of background, whether that's coming from another job, having entered it through an, an educational route, um, or, um, you know, the second, third career type thing. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously it wasn't my first career. This wasn't, but I was always about information. So information security has felt like a very natural home um, for me there are going to be other people like that and you know it can't just be me it cannot just be me there must be many people out there thinking well that's really interesting you know because security has become so mainstream we read about data breaches and security incidents all the time you know yeah, they're in well, mainstream press yeah. you can't you can't turn on the news or, or open a, a newspaper without reading about some kind of awful thing that's happened somewhere yeah. well imagine being part of the solution to that and imagine that the skills that you have picked up during your business career um, could be put to good use um, in helping helping prevent that helping deal with it afterwards helping talk to people about what happens and how we need to change things you know there's there's any number of different skills mm -hmm. um that me that lots and lots of people will have that could be brought to bear and as i say the job satisfaction of knowing that you're part of doing something that's really helpful and good is brilliant so 12 years at advent 12 mm -hmm. years in the security profession where do we go from here? What's next? For me, um, I think I'm going to do a bit more. <laughs> I think I'm going to continue to to bang the drum for security and be a, um, you know, a banner waver in business for security. I still want to be a part of the conversation about, um, you know, getting security people uh, more conversant with talking mm -hmm. to business. And likewise, because it's a two-way problem, it's not just a, this isn't a security problem, this is a, this is a business problem. Um, I still want to be part of talking to young people uh, about trying to draw them in to, uh, into the, the sector. So I'm guessing more writing, more speaking, more talking, more trying to be useful and helpful. So more of the same. Who knows, Mike? I I rarely know what I'm going to do myself. Twelve more years. Twelve more years. Twelve more years. Can the industry take it? <laughs> well, Ellie, I may be slightly biased as both a friend and a colleague, but I think that there is no more deserving winner on the night than you. So, oh, thank my you. very sincere congratulations. Thank you so much. This has been the Advent I Am podcast, a very special edition with award winner. Ellie Hurst. This is Advent I Am, Risk and Business. Thanks, Mike. <laughs>